It's extremely important to them because that's what they do for a living. And that's what you're going to see throughout the entire portfolio and advancements in graphics performance. So we're taking advantage of GPUs now. We'll show you some demos. We're actually going to see that speed up increase performance pretty dramatically. Second area I'd highlight is integration. Now remember, when we did the Macromedia acquisition prior to CS3, it was mid-cycle. So we only had about half of a cycle to actually integrate the Macromedia products with Adobe. We did, we think, a pretty good job. But in fact, now we've had that time plus the 18 months since to do a full polished version of integrating the Macromedia technologies and the Adobe technologies, one. And two, we've actually enhanced with new technologies. You're going to see things like Air now is integrated into the applications themselves. You're going to th see things like Acrobat Connect Now that's integrated, integrated into the applications themselves. So we've done a great job at inter-application inter workflow, user interface design to make that integration much more seamless. And the third area, of course, is one that we can't forget, which is around our roots, innovation. It's got to have a wow factor. So in fact, we think we're doing just that. And what we're really proud of in this release is the fact that this isn't just a little update to CS3. This isn't a little dot release. This is a major, major overhaul of CS3. And again, we're going to walk you through some of these things. We went through and looked at the number of features, though. And literally, there are hundreds and hundreds of new features as part of CS4. So again, this wasn't like a couple of people on a weekend kind of tweaking a panel. It's actually a rewrite of many portions of the application and a lot and a lot of integration work that's happened. In fact, to prove it's not just a little update, there's over 1,700 person years of work that have gone into CS4. So I can't emphasize enough. I've seen some early press clippings about they think this is just a little dot release. Well, I think you're going to find it's going to be anything but that. OK, so we're going to take a little different approach this round, which is in the past, I've sat up here and espoused what the great things are about uh, the Creative Suite. And then I brought some of my evangelists out to actually come in and talk about some of the feature set. I thought what would be more pragmatic this time is to actually bring real customers, people who would be sitting in the audience at this time, actually have you guys come up and actually showcase what it is about CS4 that you find interesting. So we found a couple around the area uh, and on the West Coast to come in and actually help with kind of the three major segments, and I'm going to invite them up in just a second. So if I was to sum, let's just jump to the first one here, which is around video. Obviously, you've seen, and Sean New pointed out, that video is a medium that's increasingly being adopted. The video adoption on the web, viewing, et cetera, has increased pretty dramatically. Well, what we're seeing, that the things that we hear repeatedly are things like, I'm going from creation to consumption. How do I monetize that process? I am trying to differentiate from the guy next to me. I'm trying to go cross medium. I'm trying to use After Effects. Uh, I'm trying to use Photoshop to bring still images in. I'm using Premiere. I'm using sound. How do I integrate those things more seamlessly? And then on the technology front, I'm trying to move to tapeless workflows. This is where I'm trying to actually move to take advantage of new camera technology, uh, et cetera. And how can, I, how can you and CS4 help me do that? So with that, I went out and searched, and actually very fortunate to have uh, a close friend of Adobe who's been using Adobe technology for some time now, been using Production Premium. So we thought we'd give him an early access copy of CS4, have him look at Production Premium CS4, and tell us what he thought. So with that, very fortunate to have Ben Grossman. Now, you're looking at Ben's, uh, Ben's reel here. Ben is the creative director for The Syndicate, which is located in Los Angeles. And he and his company have an absolutely incredible resume. Uh, visual effects supervisor for Martin Scorsese's upcoming uh, major release of Shutter Island. He also worked on Sin City. He also worked on The Day After Tomorrow, a very high profile, high budget uh, special effects program. Uh, he did on-air on broadcasts for uh, a, a uh, visual effects for ESPN's Monday Night Football and the X Games. Uh, he's done commercials for Six Flags, for BMW, for Chevy, uh, for the Energizer. You'll see that in the reel as well. And he's even done a music video for Radiohead, which really pushed the envelope. So ladies and gentlemen, very fortunate to have with us today, Ben Grossman. Thanks so hey, much, ben. Donnie. Glad to be here. So I went rambling on about all the problems we face in the video space. Was I lying? No, actually, as usual, you were right on point. And you know, it's funny, when I was looking at the reel, I was thinking, I, on all those projects, wear a lot of different hats. Sometimes I'm an editor, sometimes I'm a director, sometimes a visual effects supervisor, a lot of times artist on the box. And in each one of those situations, on each one of those products, a lot of times, the first thing that I reach for in my toolkit is the production premium suite. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent for both you and me. So, you know, I think that when I'm on set visual effects supervising with Martin Scorsese, you know, time is, is big money. At
minute, I don't have a whole lot of time to be hunting and pecking and trying to mock something up. He needs to know that he's going to get what he needs to tell his story, and I need to know that I'm going to have all the elements that I need to put it all together. So production premium lets me do that, gives me all the tools that I have to pull in footage off the video taps, uh, pull in still photographs that I shot there on set, tweak the edits a little bit, and then show a mock-up to him so that he knows that, uh, yep, that's going to work for the story so we can shoot it and move on. And uh, that same toolkit is what lets us keep track of 900 different deliverables for an ESPN graphics package, or wow. even focus more on the unexplored creative technology that we're doing for things like the Radiohead music video. We know that production premium works for us, so we can go confidently into sort of an uncharted territory. Now, you mentioned them before. Radiohead, obviously, the, it was a bleeding edge kind of implementation of technology. Tapeless workflows, there, that was kind of a key part of what you did with that project. It was a very extreme version of a tapeless workflow because it, uh, it was shot with lasers. And so it's actually one of the great things about Premiere Pro that we got in CS3 was P2 workflows that are all tapeless with all the metadata and whatnot, and, and the XD cam workflows as well. And so now I'm super excited about CS4 because we finally have the addition of a really nice, native, seamless, integrated RED camera and AVC HD workflow, which is huge because I've done that the hard way, and this is now the easy way. Can we take a look at some stuff? Yeah. Well, what I have here is a short film by uh, Rob Legato. This is a trailer for it called Double Identity. And we've got all kinds of P2 media mixed up in here. And you can see we've got all the clips and all the, you know, it's a full featured edit. And there's a lot of metadata that, that's being stored in here that we can use to help streamline the workflow and save us a lot of time. So you mentioned, obviously, the new cameras are giving a lot of metadata information around all that video uh, clips and footage. We also have a new feature built into CS4 and production premium around speech to text for both uh, doing it and searching afterwards. How do we combine the metadata with that search capability with speech to text now? Well, let me drop some mad science on you, j Dog. This, <laughs> this is the good stuff. In the old days, when somebody said, the director would call me, like, oh, yeah, there's a shot where he says something about a gum on his shoe. I, I want to use that shot, find it, and put it in the edit. Now, if I've got days or hours worth of footage, i got an assistant editor scrambling through tape logs to try and find a list of transcriptions of what everybody said and where it is and how I can find it on the tapes. Now, with Premiere Premium, I have taken all this footage, and I've run a transcription on it. And so now I can just type gum. And it pulls up a clip right there. Now, let's see what that's doing. But first, let's look at the metadata tab. So here's actually the speech to text that's already been translated, and there it is. And I'm karaoke style, I can now follow along. Yeah, and check this out. It'll do it just like karaoke. I'll call you back. How come every time I scrape the gum off my shoes, you show up? Wow. That is going to save days of somebody's time. Or actually, if you're doing a documentary with like weeks worth of footage, I mean, can you just imagine trying to find, like, oh, tell me every time that somebody mentions the word Leah or whatever. You can search through this whole thing, find all the tapes, all the logs, all the footage in a matter of minutes, which would have normally taken you weeks. Excellent. So that's a great time saver of what you've seen in, in Premiere. Now, there's also things we've done with things like Dynamic Link, which is one of the big time sinks right now in video is rendering time. And of course, you can throw as many CPUs as you want. That's very challenging. I know with Dynamic Link, we've actually eliminated the need to do a lot of re-rendering. Can you talk a little bit about that, help you, how that helps in your workflow? Well, that was a great addition to CS3, and now it's great to see it go even further in CS4 because I hate time wasters. If I just scrub through this, and naturally I get this at the last minute, I've got this whole edit that I need to get out here for approval, but oh, there's a green screen shot. So I'm going to need to comp that really quick, and in the old days, I'd have to render this out, export it, re-import into After Effects and comp it. But now I have replaced with After Effects composition. It hops right into After Effects here with my footage ready to go into a comp. And I had a project open that already had a lot of stuff I was using for this project. Now I know that this shot needs the Egyptian theater as a background. And now that After Effects has this user interface which has searchability in any one of the panels with any kinds of the media, I can just type Egypt. And oh, there's my Egyptian background. Drop that in here. Well, I still got to do the old work of keying that, but I can go back to my CS3 effects and preset search, do a search for a key that I've already saved from having keyed a lot of these shots in this project before, drag, drop. Now, ordinarily, I'd render this whole thing out, re-import it into Premiere, make sure my file names are all right, my settings are all correct. Or now, with Dynamic Link, I just click on Premiere, and the update pops in right there. So I don't even have to render it from After Effects to see what's happening and make sure that this all works in the context of the edit. I can see that the color is matching the continuity of the rest of the shots around it, and then do all my final rendering and quality control. So what I just saw, that was about, about a two-second clip or so. What's the rendering time on something uh, that, that